Welcome to Spirit Life Talks. Today we're here with Pastor Sunday Adelija from the Ukraine. This man is truly an apostle sent by God to the Ukraine. We're so delighted and so glad that you're here today, Pastor. We just thank you so much for making the time. And plus, I want to add the word reformer that Michael used. You are totally a reformer in that part of you, Europe, bringing reformation to a place where people have never heard about God, do not know the concept of the true God. So this is an amazing privilege that we have today, Michael, to discuss uh, some of our Christian topics with uh, Dr. Sunday. Thank you so much, Pastor Juno, Dr. Michael. It's my pleasure. I never heard of your program before, and I was pleasantly surprised when I got the invitation from Juno, and I went and watched some of your videos. I'm so happy that you are one of the mainstream, mainline Christian thinking people, doctrines and in America. <laughs> it's, comf it's comforting. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, you know, that's the topic for today. We really want to talk about the great falling away um, as written in the book of Thessalonians. So Michael and I are going to engage you in that topic, really. Uh, want to get our viewers some insights on what are we up against? Uh, in the coming days, uh, especially for the church, what, what do we need to be watching out for? Um, in the book of Thessalonians, Apostle Paul says about the great falling away. There will be many, even in the Christian system, in the church system, that will fall away. So we want to discuss some uh, more about that. Michael, do you want to add anything to that? Well, I think it's a really important, really important thing going on in the West right now because many people have left the church, but they haven't left God. So what are we to do as church leaders to help people right now in that situation? Yeah, and I think that COVID, COVID has really played a great role in that. With COVID making a lot of people to sit at home and, uh, you know, with the limitation in gathering of people and all the kind of restrictions, it's also to teach the church that the church is not just about church buildings, that church buildings is not the church. And the church is supposed to be all about the kingdom. Is We were not born, we were not saved into the church, but we were born into the kingdom. So I think the, the way out and the, the uh, saving grace for the church at this time is to go back to the gospel of the kingdom, to the message of the kingdom, that what matters is not really where we meet, but who we meet with. And if we realize that we are the church, that we carry the church inside of us, it wouldn't you know, even. I like it the point. Yeah, it would not bother us. I like us the so point much. that you bring. Um, uh, that this is no more. We have we have transitioned out of the religious era into the kingdom era. Now Ooh, it's all about the kingdom. I like that. That's well said. I like yeah. that. And I think God is helping us with all these situations go happening all over the world. Yeah, I think it's a confirmation that Amen. we are transitioning from kingdom yes, from church era to kingdom era. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. One of our uh, themes for our broadcast is uh, live with our spirits forward. In other words, there's only so much you can do just doing the religious um, stuff, you know, do's and do don'ts and the rules. There's more than that. We have to be part of the kingdom. We have to get the kingdom awakened in us. And that's some of the main themes that we push in this new era, the era of awakening, where people come to the knowledge that they are sons of God, there is forgiveness of sins through the cross, and that they draw near to God with a sincere heart, etc. And I like your format of uh, your program here because it also pro projects the kingdom of God. You know, I see uh, um, uh, Michael coming from the Caucasian culture. I see uh, Junu coming from, I think, Asian Indian culture, yes. and um, and that uh, you are just identifying with the kingdom. The doctrines you have is the same, very sound, and um, you project just Christ, not denomination, not uh, cultural differences. This is what we need. This is the body of yeah. Christ right here. Absolutely. We call it the one new man in Christ. You know that? Yeah, that one new man in Christ. One new man. There's no more color differences, gender differences. It's one new man. We all are one new man in Christ. Right. Yeah. That's that's what Paul was. Uh, exactly. Emphasizing. Yeah. So uh, we want to start off with just uh, having you share a little bit about your story. We watched your uh, biography video. Amazing. What an inspiring, touching Unbelievable. video. I just want to know how you endured through all that. 
persecution and ridicule and you stayed the course and became an apostle really to the Russia and the Ukraine area. So if you don't mind, just share a little bit about that uh, yeah. history of Thank what you. you went through. Well, I was born in Nigeria some 55 yeah. years ago. And um, I lived in that country till I was 19. Wow. And at 19, I, I lived in a very modest environment. Our family had gone through some series of tragedies that, w that left us really uh, in abject poverty, so much that I couldn't go to school back in my country uh, after I finished my high school because I could not just afford the money to go to school. So, but God helped me by uh, providing me with a scholarship. And that was wow. 35, some 36 years ago. And that was when there was still Soviet Union, communism. And uh, you wouldn't think that God would use a communist party and a communist nation to Whoa. provide a way out for a Christian, a Christian boy growing up in Africa without any hope of furthering his education. And it was the Communist Party that paid for my scholarship. Education. Praise the Lord. <laughs> that sounds like God. <laughs> of course, they had their ulterior motive. And the ulterior motive was <laughs> they were recruiting the best of the best, the creme of the, the, the creme de, de la creme of uh, African youth, so that they bring them to Russia and brainwash them and then send back, send them back to Africa to do communist revolution. <laughs> but oh, wow. <laughs> God has interesting ways to make his uh, stuff work. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> but Only God, God can do that. <laughs> God outplayed them because outplayed them. That's what I was talking about. Outplayed them. <laughs> I, got, I got a scholarship from them, and six months later, I got saved. <laughs> wow. So you were there, and you didn't get know the Lord. He didn't. You know, he was sent here, and he got saved in a communist. <laughs> no, no, I got saved. I got saved just before leaving my country. Leaving, okay. Oh, before leaving. Yeah, gotcha. just six, six months. I got the scholarship from them. And six months before I left, I got saved. Yeah. And that yeah. six months was intense. I was, okay. I got to know God so much that I was yeah. ready to go. I was ready to go and die for God. Wow. <laughs> Amazing story. So, so I, what are some of the things that happened to you, Pastor? Well, one of the things that I encountered was I never knew there could be a country that would project itself like has been godless so that was the biggest right. shock for me so the first two yeah. weeks i was there and i was saying my god i would rather go back to africa this is horrible no church we tried to go to the churches they, they were they had been converted into museums there were no yeah. church and we didn't yeah. know there were churches but they were in the underground they were hiding they were being prosecuted so that was the first shock the second shock was i had a the an image of Jesus, like a picture of Jesus, and I put him on. The, I put it on the wall of my room, and uh, one day, and you are mandated to live with a Russian student. So you cannot just live by yourself with another foreigner. You must. There must be okay. a, a local Russian student with you in the room. Okay. We didn't know. The idea was they had to write reports on you what you're doing. So the report got to the Communist Party that this guy is a Christian. And that was a problem. So one oh, day wow. in the afternoon, wow. as I was sleeping, uh, the Communist Party leader of the church, of the uh, school and the, my professor and all of them came to my room. Boom, boom, boom. They were banging on the door. I was sleeping. Then I woke up. They said, what is that on the wall? I said, this is not what is that. This is who is this? This is Jesus. Do you don't want to tell me you never saw the picture of Jesus? They said, take him, take it down. They said, take oh it down. Goodness. If you don't take him down now, wow. if you don't take it down now, you are going to lose your scholarship and we we'll either send you, we we'll either send you to the court or go to Siberia or go back to Africa. So wow. that, that same moment, I could hear the Holy Spirit whispering to me that don't worry, take the picture down, but don't allow them 
to take you down, to take him down from the walls of your heart. Yes, they can take him down All from right, the wall yeah. of the dormitory, but don't mm -hmm. ever let them take him down from the walls wow. of your heart. Heart. So, I so guess, you complied with the government rules, but you didn't compromise with God. Yes. Yeah. Well, you see, it, wow. they, they had a law, is uh, Article 35, that you didn't have the right to propagate religion. So by demonstrating that uh, picture down the, over there on the wall, they view that as propagation of religion. Propagation. And that is right. yeah, violation of the Constitution. So you are either sued and taken yeah. to court and be, be punished or you you have to you just obey but god had god used that because mm -hmm. uh, i got to discover that okay it's not about outward things not about going to church because there was no church to go to not about right. uh having a pastor there was no pastor no believers around not about the picture you could, not about outward things anymore so it entrenched my faith in god in the spirit of god in personal relationship with god rather than in the physical things that I, that was surrounding took you deeper really yeah. right Even yeah though they did that yeah wow you know pastor one of the things that we really stress in our program is having a spirit forward perspective hmm. you know even the apostle paul says that he was directly trained by jesus yeah and it sounds like that you had the same experience it sounds like jesus used this to directly train you personally yeah you are absolutely correct because uh at that particular time i was writing to all christian leaders that i knew you know i'd read their books uh, all in america in africa and one ministry in america said come over here we'll give you a scholarship you, you know you are just 19 and you are in communism no let's give you a scholarship I was praying about it one day and the Lord just ministered to my heart and said, no, you've got to reject that scholarship to go to the Bible school in, in, in America because this communism is your Bible school. Wow. Wow. So he rejected wow. his opportunity to come to the U.S. and went where the gospel is really needed. Wow. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Not saying America doesn't need the gospel, but still definitely Russia and Ukraine definitely needs uh, gospel a whole lot more you know we find that commonly amongst leaders oftentimes there's a pretty good alternative presented to them before they accept their full destiny and calling praise, praise the lord, the lord that you made the right choice yeah now, we are so inspired and you're inspiring a whole lot of young um, christians and others to carry the cross to bear the cross and do what the lord is telling you to do rather than our comforts our convenience you chose to you know listen to the calling of God because you were called definitely no you know I don't know if I would have taken up that kind of persecution that you did but I mean we are really inspired by this kind of uh actions thank you yeah and um so that was a good choice because later on in life I ran into graduates of that bible school where I was uh, uh invited to go to school and in later on when I let when I met them they later became my students and because really? and they were always telling me that your perspective of the bible is totally different then i remember what god did to me that he actually used communism to be my bible school rather than the doctrines of men amen that's amazing that's amazing okay so so after uh, that after that mm -hmm. i was going to school i was going to school i went to to the college I finished the language school, then I went to the university. I did my first degree in uh, journalism. Then I went for my second degree, also a master's in journalism. And then after I finished, I was supposed to do my PhD in philosophy. Then yeah. the Lord ministered to my heart and said, no, I sent you here, not just for academic progress, but for right. you to spread the gospel. You studied journalism, which is specializing in bad news. So, but I have right. brought you here to train you, not, not for you to propagate bad news to the world, but to actually right. carry the good news to the world. So instead of continuing to, pra I was practicing journalism in, in, on television and doing it, but then the Lord directed me that, no, it's time to go into full-time ministry. Sp yeah. de dedicate your life to 
good news rather than to bad news. So that's what I did. In 94, yeah. we started mm -hmm. our church here in Ukraine, 1994. And, um, and uh, now, you know, the church became the largest church in this country. And then wow. later wow. on, yeah, later on became the largest church in Europe. And, um, nice. but four what? years, but four years before then, for four years, I couldn't get one. Okay, I had people getting saved, but they were mainly students, foreign students like myself. So, but there right. were not many, maybe like less than 20 foreigners. But I, in four years, I couldn't get one European saved. But later on, the Lord taught me a lot of lessons. There's a long story on how to penetrate with the gospel to Europeans. Today, our church is 99% ukrainian russian wow, white caucasian uh, caucasian church yeah so and uh, and but you know it's a whole lot of story but it became the biggest church in, U in ukraine in in the U in the ussr in europe and uh yeah that's what the lord has done wow what a testimony and, and on top of that i heard you say you did you learn ukrainian language while you were oh that's studying? the only way that's the only way for you to to wow. minister here otherwise you'll not be affected language yeah that's a man <laughs> wow. Yeah. wow if you don't speak so, their uh, language then you don't stand any chance at all nobody uses english language almost here wow wonderful pastor we we love the tenacity that you had in seeking and saving the lost it sounds like you just never you never took no for an answer and you didn't give up yes um yes well I didn't have, I think that training in communism really helped me because it was either you are going to go 100% for Christ and risk your life for it, or you're going to compromise. And you are, you, there is no middle ground. Either you are going to become a communist and, a, and an athe, atheist, or you are going to, going to be radical and radical, radical servant of God. So I didn't have any option. The only other option was to become a communist. No, and that was no option. So I've got to be radical, hundred percent. You were you were truly in this world, but not of this world. Well, you know, not only me. There were a lot of because later on I met uh, the Russians and the Ukrainians that were in the former in the, the, during the communism. They were in the underground church. They were they really suffered because they. They couldn't meet in their homes. They had to go into the like snow you're having. They go into the snow somewhere and go and pray to God and try to, you know, it was really tough for them. So, you know, there were remnants. These were remnants that God kept during the days of communism. And now all of them are doing great, for, great things for God. Um, about this, what the trends that are going on in the Christian uh, realm today, especially the, the church system and what, people need to be aware of what people need to be watching out for so we want to just open it up for a discussion with you especially um you know i know you have really the last several months and maybe even years exposed the truth to the people to watch out for certain things do not fall into this trap and that trap so can we talk a little bit about um the church system and what is going on today what are the trends that you're seeing today I, I became really, I was, you know, I was uh, under communism and communism came down and I had yeah. just been very busy with trying to build the church in this part of the world. So this is not the West, but the impression that I had about the West and America is, oh, these are countries that have always lived in freedom and, you know, they have, they, they represent the true faith and the gospel. So, but when I eventually had the opportunity to travel to America and to the West, I was shocked when I began to listen to the doctrines and the teachings that were coming. You, you see, the loudest church coming from America that people in other parts of the world, in Africa here and yeah. other parts of the world are seeing, they are not really the true church. These are the TV evangelists, the Christian television, you know, these are world faith kind of people. Uh, right. You know, this, this kind of people that they, they project just one aspect of the gospel. And one I aspect. began to discover that, no, 
I was under communism, fighting with my life just to survive. And you are telling me everything just must be good and rosy. And it's all about money. It's all about prosperity and this. No, no, this is not the gospel. And But I discovered that a lot of people, especially in developing countries, follow these kind of trends. They follow this kind of lousy Christianity. And I yeah, thought... Lousy and easy Christianity. Easy Christianity. <laughs> bread, yeah. bread and butter... Ah, Christianity. <laughs> you know, I'm so glad you brought up the term. You said they only bring one aspect or one slice of the faith, uh, which is, you know, prosperity. Definitely God wants to bless us, prosper us. But that's not the gospel. <laughs> the gospel is more than that. It's more God than wants that. to awaken each one of the people, whether you're from a poor country or rich country. He wants to wake us all up to our riches of inheritance in Christ Jesus. You know, God wants to bring the kingdom in everybody's heart. That's a true gospel. But as you said, about Dr. Sunday, that we've gotten into the peripherals. You know, we started to pick this and choose this and choose that and just focus on one area. And as you said, we are doing a disservice to the people and the congregations by preaching a half-baked gospel. Yeah, and, it, and, and this kind of Christianity, the microwave Christianity, became so <laughs> popular, especially in the country that I come from, Nigeria, so much that when I went, go to Nigeria, everybody wants to become another American prosperity preacher. And, uh, and I say, where is the life of denial? Where is the life of suffering? Where is the life of, uh, you know, sacrificing and, uh, you know, laying your life down? Where is all that in Christianity of today? And I just felt that, no, somebody must speak out, especially on behalf of Africa, where I come from, where this trend of Christianity has just taken off like white fire. People think of Africa, they think of a continent that is experiencing revival uh, with Christianity. Right. But really, what I am seeing in Africa is not Christianity at all. It's actually more of syncretism. You know, it's a mixture wow. of wow. yeah, syncretism of Christianity, tradition, you know, paganism. Paganism. And, yeah. Wow. wow. So it's really a mismatch, like a hodgepodge of a lot of different stuff to make it attractive to the people, but really not doing much to their soul. You got it. Man. You got it. Exactly. That's what's happening. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. I think, you know, it's, it's a growing trend that uh, the world needs to watch out, especially the Christian realm. It's not only in Africa, in many parts of the world, Asia, um, the North Americas, we are seeing this trend of people flocking towards the easy believism, the easy gospel. And uh, when things, you know, when the economies are good, when things are looking good, you know, it's easy to believe that. But when, as you mentioned in the beginning of the show, in the last segment, when a pandemic like COVID hits and when trouble hits, that's when people realize that they build their house on sand. Yeah. That they don't have the spiritual foundation sustained through the weather, uh, the tough weather of life. And, and I discovered that you know, another problem that the church is having is that a lot of people know that these people are wrong, but there is this political correctness that is in the culture that has also come to the church, that people see the wrong things, but they now think, no, maybe it's, let, it, let it just be, you don't need to talk about it, let's just talk about the good stuff, talk about the right stuff. But sometimes we need to help people who don't know better to open their eyes just to know that, no, there is another aspect to, to all these things that you are hearing. Well, and that fits with real life. Yeah. Because if you just talk about things that are good, it doesn't really fit with people's actual experience of life. Exactly. Pastor, I love how you began to teach immediately when you moved to your country and you didn't compromise on the full message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it, will, it, will make, it will make you a lot of enemies. But, you know, what I being, being through communism already has taught yeah. me that, you know, it, in, in communism, it's like the whole country is against you. That, right. that has taught me a lesson that it doesn't really matter how much or how many people are against you as long as one person is, is for you. If he is for yeah. you, it doesn't matter the number of people that are against you. Because one person on the side of truth or one person on the side of God is still a, is still a majority. Yeah, you know, I'm so glad that, as you said, uh, you didn't succumb or bow down to the pressures of the enemies or 
uh, even the fear didn't, you know, get hold of you because you face communism. I don't think any <laughs> Christian uh, uh, false preachers out there are bigger than communism. <laughs> you no, know? no, so this doesn't is not compare. A, exactly, it doesn't compare. So I'm glad you stood for the truth. Now, can we also get a deep dive into some of the traits? I know in some of your recent videos that you have posted on uh, social media, we get uh, some of the specific traits, especially false preachers are propagating uh, and people like, you know, this is an analogy I get as the Bible says, as a sheep goes for the slaughter, you know, these yes. innocent sheep yeah. are being taken marching down the slaughter lane and they have no idea, you know, these preachers are using the money uh, tactics and other mind control tactics. Because I saw one of your videos where you even talk about this mind control thing going on yeah. uh, where you, the preachers want to take control over these people. Yeah, because, for example, in Africa, specifically where I was addressing, uh, people have turned God into a miracle. Just the only understanding of God that people have is that he's going to give them some miracles or some gifts, some some blessings. So you don't know the aspect of God that you need to love him, you need to know him. So when people go to church, not about going to love God. It's more about who can do the bigger miracle, <laughs> who can perform the bigger right. magic. So people will go to any extent in Africa right now just to create miracles. And some of them will go into uh, all kinds of occultic practices, uh, mind, mind uh, ma manipulative pra practices. Some of them will, you know, just do all kind of, you know, they will get themselves involved into any kind of uh, evil just to make to appear to people that they are the big men, they are the powerful men, and people should all should come and worship them. And you know, it's it's uh, the, the it's people. Really, yeah, it's horrible. It's really That's looking. Horrible. It looks like it's really uh, the, the, uh, those people or preachers haven't truly come to the Lord. It's their flesh is still acting out. They still want the Bible says the three things: the lust of the flesh, the lust to the eyes, and pride of life. Mm -hmm. The pride of life is still there, you know. Uh, would Christ ever do this kind of stuff? And the answer is no. no he wouldn't come no. in. So it looks like, the, the, as you said, the hearts have not been washed. They just uh, found another platform. You know, I've seen a lot of these uh, Christian um, ministers who are not proper in the Lord. Since they didn't get a platform in the world, they think they can do that in the church. <laughs> Which is right. such a, you know, I tell people, this is not the area where you come for show. Okay, <laughs> this Christianity, go find something else to do. Go find a drama or play or something. Don't right. come here. And because you're playing with the living God when it comes to ministry, we have to be sincere. We have to fear God. We have to have proper reverence for the things of God. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, that's why I try to, I discovered that uh, because there are so many of them in Africa, the ordinary people in the pulpits, they don't even know how to differentiate them anymore. So that's why I had to go on social media and basically demonstrate <laughs> <laughs> the things that these people do, yes. you know, to manipulate so that ordinary person could just switch on and see that, oh, wow, I've yes. been messed up. These people have, they have messed up my mind. <laughs> Got it. So, Pastor, let me ask you for the viewer's sake. If, if, I, if one of our audience members, if one of us were caught in this trap, where would we start to get back on track? What should we start doing? Number one, we've got to begin to tell people that this is all about personal relationship with a loving God that loved you so much and, that, and he gave his life. He came to die for you. It's just about you and your daddy. It's not about what you could get from him. It's not about looking for his hands. It's not about his blessings. It's just about you and him. Just Amen. loving on him, getting to know him as love, getting to acknowledge his love for you, and just reciprocating that by loving him back. Basic. Wow. Yeah, you know, so amazing because, you know, more than ever before, there's so much mental health crisis in the world. Right. And people need to focus on what uh, Pastor Sunday just said, which is get back to the basics. Get back to loving God. Your mind can only be healed as the Holy Spirit comes in, in you and dwells in you and you have that communion with the vine. 
Pastor, I could just feel God's response to what you were saying there. I just felt like I was getting a big hug from God myself. And sometimes, sometimes we, we just get distracted by what we need to survive. It's almost like trying to make a living and then using God as a means to making a living. So God is no more the goal. God is no more the end. God has become the means. It's about wow. getting back to a place where God is the end in itself, not the means by wow. which you get some of your needs met or some of your problems solved. You know, when we come to the Lord, as you rightly said, we have to lay it all down. That's right. We have to surrender it, you know, because, you know, uh, as you mentioned the word, getting a hand from God. Hand means like a handout from God. That's not the key. You know, we need healing. We need the healing of our inner man. We need healing from the wounds the world has given us. We need to be restored with a sound mind, as Apostle Paul says. God has given us a sound mind, a mind, a power. That's the aim here, right? We need to think clearly and know that we are sons of God. We need to know what the cross has done for us and really live a life of gratitude for God and before men. And that's when, as you mentioned, Papa, Dr. Sunday, when we get back to the, the true gospel, and preach the true gospel to the world, that right relationship will start to trigger. What do you think, Michael? I mean, it's just very convicting and very powerful. And we have to put God first, look away from everything else, and focus idol. on Him and surrender our lives to Him. That's really the only way. That's why the Bible calls it a narrow path. Amen. And so, Dr. Sunday, for leaders who are listening, um, what are your, like, if, if the leader has accidentally been caught up in these wrong teachings or you know there are a lot of sincere people who've been caught up in these wrong teachings and then there are deliberately uh, wicked people as apostle paul says who has a seared conscience now but for those innocent people who have been caught up especially leaders what do you tell these leaders what do they need to do to turn their congregations around if they have taught a wrong gospel i think the leaders themselves need to start with themselves the leaders most of the time see they want to experience success in ministry so they want growth they want uh, uh large number fame. Come fame pro popularity and things so but i think what the pastors need to do first is to stop looking at living under that, that pressure of oh how successful the other pastor down the street is uh, or yes. what right. what people understand to be success but i think we need the pastors themselves need to come back to the master and just lay everything down and lay themselves down. We sometimes forget that it's not all about this earth. We are too, we are, we are going to be here for a short time. You know, 100 years, even if you get to live 120 years, it's still too short. We don't have a, an abiding home here. It is not our home. Our home is still in heaven. Let's be heaven focused rather than earthly focused. Earthly. Amen. Amen. It's the power of a transformed perspective. Yes. which is a key topic that we discuss on our show regularly. So, Pastor, um, give us an example of how having this holy or heavy perspective has helped you in ministry. Well, uh, you know, every day I face one challenge or the other uh, in this country, being a black person that is leading a 99% Caucasian congregation of thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of people. Uh, I become a political target. Sometimes uh, I'm accused of horrible things just to dent my reputation so that uh, all these people would stop following me so that they would not keep on, you know, be, I would not keep on being so famous and having control of some people. So you've got to learn to die to yourself. And you've got to know that, you know, this flesh is supposed, is supposed to suffer. This flesh must go through pain. That's so correct. that your spirit will not be dependent on anything around you. So it's on daily basis. Sometimes the nationalist and the uh, you know racist will come and attack me, and that are making me. That's why Jesus said, "Rejoice when those kind of things happen to you." Amen. The reason why wow. you have to rejoice is it helps you to be more heavenly focused, and you are not going to be subdued by the things of the earth. You are totally hidden in God when those kind of things happen. They drive you to your master and they make you to put your perspective correct. And the perspective is heaven. It's not anything that we could get here on earth. Wow. Amen. Wow. Amazing. That was pretty good. You know, that 
I hope and pray that, you know, ministers listening, leaders listening all over the world would take heed because as the key word you said is our life here is short. You know, with the short life, you know, it's easy to fool ourselves and deceive ourselves into thinking nobody's watching. God is watching and we need to show uh, a life of integrity before God and before man. Amazing, amazing testimony. It's just amazing that when I listen to your testimony and the different parts of it, how important personal character has been to what the success that God has had through your life and ministry, Pastor. Yes. Yes. So that's a great topic. So Pastor, I've seen many ministers who are like one-hit wonders. In other words, they have a short-term success and then they fizz out. But Matt, people of integrity like you are the ones who will remain for a longer haul compared to these short-sighted people who burn out. Yeah, and if you build your life on the things that are here, if this, if your focus is on the success, it could go. It will become like a sand. It will be like you are standing on the on the sandy sandy soil rather than on the rocky so exactly. soil. So you are standing on the sand, not on the rock. So if you wow. build your life on fame, it will just disappear like the sand disappear under the feet, under your feet. If you build your 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 ministry on fame, on popularity, on things like that, they will disappear. But if you are ready to lose it all, the key thing is that you must be ready to lose it all. Just always assume that you don't have anything, including your family. Because the people oh, who wow. lose their families, some people have accidents. Some the wife could die, the husband could die. Sometimes all family could die. That all your, I know a pastor who lost six children and the wife one day. And you are oh, so what wow. makes me better than him? I'm not better than him. That could happen to me. And I must always look into the perspective that what about if that has happened to me now? Will I still be as uh, as 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 passionate? Faithful as loving yeah. will i still be as grateful will i still be as obedient will i still be as devoted to him as i was before then so we must always look into the perspective of what about if everything goes right now some people will go through hurricane and everything without insurance and everything is gone it's, it's coming it's becoming to feel like Apostle Paul felt when he said, I'm ready to live in abundance and in poverty, in, 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 uh, either at the loss of everything, I'm ready right. to lose everything or to ready live in abundance or in, in poverty, being that state of mind always. That way, your identity is not concerning what you have, what you, are, what you possess, or what is around you, but it's always in him. It's always about him. He becomes bigger than all other things that you have or surround you. Amazing, amazing. That's that is a, an amazing example. Amazing exp example and amazing outlook, right? Yeah. You know, just like a Paul says, that's a high calling we have to reach that. No matter what losses we face, what's our reaction to it? Do we still love God or are we going to de deny God? Amazing. And so uh, before we close, I have one more segment to, to cover with you, Pastor Sunday, which is the next great awakening. We've heard several prophecies on that there wouldn't be a worldwide awakening. The global pandemic was just uh, shaking a wake-up call by God to the world. But then there would be coming a time when there is going to be a worldwide harvest of souls. And what do you uh, uh, think about those, um, you know, especially the harvest to come? And what do we need to prepare for such a, a gathering of souls? I think it's going to be an independent work of God. It's going to be an independent working of the Spirit of God. It's not going to be the kind of harvesting that we're used to, uh, that we're expecting. It's not going to be connected with one denomination or one particular Amen. pastor Amen. or one yes. big name or one big uh, method uh, like we used to. It's going to be something right. sovereign. It. It's going to be something that will be the movement and wow. the moving of the Spirit of God by himself. God could, I personally believe, or I think that God is going to use technology, internet, airwaves, uh, yes. as a, a tool for revival rather than um, local church, actually. And God is going to just open up platforms, come technology, some ideas are going to come in the last days that will allow millions of people, billions, to be penetrated with the gospel right in their homes. I think that's the kind of move that's going to come rather than gathering people physically like we're doing right now. 
I agree totally to yeah. that because I, we've had dreams and visions also right. very similar that it is not anything like we've uh, looked uh, at in the past or it's not anything that we've expected. As you said, God will leverage this technology. It's no longer a physical uh, church or a physical auditorium where we can maybe minister to 1,000 or 2,000, say, but now millions can watch or view things in an instant uh, through the technology now. You know, we it's amazing that you said that, Pastor. That's so exciting to us. You know, the roads that the Romans built are the roads that Jesus Christ used to evangelize the world, to set those seeds that now, now 2,000 years later are believing in Him. And we believe that the Internet and social media might be the modern-day Romans road. Wow. Yeah, and I, I agree with that because right now, people like uh, Facebook, Google, and uh, some of these technological giants, they are coming up with an idea right now to make internet accessible to all men in all continents and in every village. They want to set up some satellite that will make it possible for people not to pay for internet anymore than to have just free internet access. If that happens, <laughs> 24 hours internet asset, no payment, nothing. You, you, you imagine kind of revival that will be happening in places like India, China, Africa. Yeah. Wow. wow. That's right. Man. It's true. Whew. That's like the, really the prophecy in the scriptures that says, as the earth covers the sea, so will the knowledge of the Lord yes. cover the earth. You know, that's, yes. that's, now I can see how it's connected. As Pastor Sunday was saying, I could see how, you know, the whole world covering with the knowledge of who the true God is and who, what salvation is, etc. You know, one of the amazing parts of this billion soul prophecy that's come out is that part of that prophecy is, is the prophets saw that Chinese workmen were watching 24-7 worship on their watches. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Man. But the funny thing is, is that that prophecy came out, I think, in like the 60s or 70s. And Ooh, no one wow. Before really the internet came out. And even the watch before you had the iWatch. Apple Watch and all that. Wow. wow. <laughs> I never even heard of that before, but I can yeah, say. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Ooh. You know what? We have such a great promising future ahead, uh, Dr. Sunday. I'm, I'm pinching my, you are uh, so um, humble enough to come uh, into our presence. I know we are just starting in the ministry and we just want to share the gospel to the world. He's a medical doctor. I am a business professional. Our agenda is the kingdom of God. We just want people to be saved. Amen. We want people to be delivered. We want people to be set free. And I'm so thankful leaders uh, and the elders like you are helping younger generations and the generations to follow to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. Yeah, it's my pleasure. And I'm so happy that uh, people like you are professional. You know, it used to be that People who we, we come to churches who are professional, like you people, the medical doctors, business people, and they will just sit down in churches. And then the only thing they do is to bring their tithe and offering. And they think that that way they have served God. But to actually speak out and present the gospel in such a balanced way that you do it. And so the, the, the gospel is coming out of the four walls of the church. We are now beyond the, 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 the okay. four walls. No more four walls. walls. Are coming down. No more limitations. Yeah. No and more this limitations. is, we are going to have more and more of this when everybody will become a, a, a gospel minister. We are all yes. full gospel, full gospel ministers, even Amen. in our professional places. So as a, yes. as a, as uh, a, as a doctor, you are an apostle yes. there. As a, yep. as a Amen. business person, you are, yes. you are an evangelist over there. He's full time gospel for everybody instead of just some one percent in the pulpit and 90 percent sitting in the hall no we are all professionals for christ that's it we right. are all full gospel ministers we that are, i think that's we the are all pictures of men yeah, yeah that's the future that's waiting for the church amen Woo. dr sunday before we close would you pray for the viewers uh all across the world and just bless um the, you know, just bless them with the Holy Spirit's presence and power, especially in these troubling times. We are seeing worldwide weather problems, worldwide pandemics. We just want people to receive the uh, comfort of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the comforter during these times. Thank you so much. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you yes, for this period, for this time, for the opportunity to be able to share your word with my brethren. 
uh, and for using them to bring uh, this platform to the world and for using them to touch from their room, from their studio there, to touch the four corners of the earth. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for what you can do. Thank you for the, the hunger in them, for righteousness, for truth, for the things of God, for the kingdom of God, to do the right thing. I pray that you keep on uh, strengthening this studio, this team of uh, uh, Brother Thomas and Brother uh, Farmer. You keep Amen. on raising them up to reach their full potential to extend your kingdom. And I'm also praying right now for all the viewers that are going to watch this program, that have been watching this program, that Lord, you will keep on opening their eyes. You keep on bringing enlightenment, understanding to them. And you will also in empower them to become full gospel ministers, full-time gospel, yes. uh, f uh, in wherever they are, as professionals, yes. in the, their profession, wherever they go to, they become full-time ministers for you. They would not wait to be anointed by somebody or to be ordained by anybody, but they would know that the Spirit of God in them has already ordained yes. them, and you will use them to cover the earth with your truth, and that your, yes. your spirit will fill the earth as the waters fill the sea, and your truth Amen. will liberate our world and generation for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We bless you, Pastor Sunday, and your family. May the Lord keep yes. you and protect you. May the Lord cause, uh, face, cause his face to shine on you all and use you mightily, not only in Europe, now all over the world. May God just open up the uh, borders for you to propagate this true uh, gospel. And we, and we just say that Jesus asked the Father, he said, ask me for the nations and I will give them to you as your inheritance. We say that the nations are opening, opening the doors wide to you and your ministry in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I receive it in Jesus' name. Thank you so very much, my brothers. And uh, keep on doing a good job. Amen. You too, brother. Thank you so much. Bless you. We will be in touch again. All Thank right. You, Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.